Let's read the question. What is the author's central claim in the given passage? Central claim is a big picture kind of question, which means you need to map, you need to read the entire passage, map it, get an idea about what the main idea and the central claim are, right? So that's what we're going to do. This is a long passage, about 105 lines, a little unusual. We've divided it into five or six uh, slides. Each slide, I'll draw up a summary and then we'll draw up a complete summary of the passage. So here we go. This is the beginning. The following article is adapted from George Woodcock's uh, War Commentary for Anarchism, in mid, which came in mid-March 1944. Right. In no, in no characteristic is existing society in the West so sharply distinguished from the earlier societies, whether of Europe or the East, than its conception of time. Okay, whenever you see extreme words, circle it. Right, I see the word no. No characteristic is existing society so sharply distinguished. It distinguishes itself from other uh, previous societies because of its concept of time. To the ancient Chinese, Greek or Arab, those were also great civilizations, but time just represented cyclic processes of nature. For this reason, civilizations highly developed in other respects had very primitive means of measuring time, the hourglass or the sundial. All these de devices were approximate and inexact, and were often rendered unreliable by the weather or laziness of the tender. Let's summarize it. The most, the, the negative or the extreme word that's been used, I'll put that separately. Present day Western society, different from earlier ones in its conception of time. Next one was even highly developed civilization had only primitive means of measuring time. And the hourglass and sundial were examples of these measuring devices, but they, these devices were approximate and inexact, hence unreliable. Moving on to the second paragraph, modern Western man, however, lives in a world which runs according to the mathematical symbols of clock time. So, clock, you go by the symbols of the clock. The clock turns time from a process of nature into a commodity that can be measured and bought and sold like soap or sultanas. Wow, it's become a measurable quantity. And because without some means of exact timekeeping, industrial capitalism could never have developed, again an extreme word, and could not continue to exploit the workers, the clock represents an element of mechanical tyranny in the lives of modern men. More potent than any individual exploiter or any other machine, the machine became the most exploitative device, right? So present day workers, or sorry, Western man runs on the clock, time is now considered a commodity, industrial capitalism could not, could never have happened without the help of the clock. The clock is equal to a symbol of tyranny for modern man. Summarize this, Clock gained so much importance that it became an oppressor. Next paragraph. It is a frequent circumstance of history that a culture or civilization develops the device which will later be used for its own destruction. Ancient Chinese, for example, always remember an example is cited after a fact is stated. You could normally skip this here. I'm going to read the entire passage. But if you, this is your first read of the passage, this is one place where you could skip. The ancient Chinese, for example, invented gunpowder, which was developed by the military experts of the West and eventually led to the downfall of the Chinese civilization. Similarly, the next example, ingenuity of the craftsmen in medieval cities of Europe was the invention of the clock. And then what happened? With its revolutionary alter, uh, alteration of the concept of time, materially assisted the growth of exploiting capitalism. And because of that, it led to the destruction of the medieval culture. Okay, so let's uh, put that there. Frequent circumstances, culture develops the device that eventually destroys. And examples for that, China, gunpowder, medieval age, and the clock. Next paragraph, the clock represents the key machine of the machine age, both for its influence on technology and its influence on habits of men. Technically, the clock was the first really automat automatic machine that attained any importance in the life of men. Clock making became the industry from which men learned the elements of machine making and gained the technical skill that was to produce the complicated machinery of the Industrial Revolution. So the clock played two important roles, that is, key machine of the machine age, plus, you know, the influence on habits of men, on technology and the habits of men. Summary of this entire slide would be that medieval civilization invented the clock, it ended up ruining that civilization. Next, Socially, the clock had a more radical influence. So we were talking about the influence it had on men. Socially, the cl clock had a more radical influence than any other machine in that it was the means by which the regularization and regimentation of life necessary for an exploiting system of industry could best be attained. 
The new capitalists in particular became rapidly time conscious. Time is money became one of the key slogans of the capitalist ideology. And the timekeeper was the most significant of the new types of officials introduced by the capitalist dispensation. So, so many extreme words there. In the early factories, the employers went so far as to manipulate their clocks or to sound their factory whistles at the wrong times in order to defraud their workers a little of this valuable new commodity, that is time. So the two extreme bits can be always sort of circled. Clock is more radical than any other machine, facilitated regularization and regimentation. And of course, the second one, that the timekeeper was the most significant of the new types of officials introduced and employers began to manipulate their clocks to defraud, defraud the poor workers. Third, the next paragraph, sorry. The influence of the clock imposed a regularity on the lives of the majority of men. Most men came under this like regularization. Men actually became, as the Victorian phrase put it, as regular as clockwork. Only in the country districts where the natural lives of animals and plants and the elements still dominated life, did any large proportion of the population fail to succumb to the deadly tick of monotony. So everybody was being you know, regulated by the clock. The clock began to impose regularity. Only people in the countryside were spared. If you were to sum that up, the clock created a totally regimented society. Time became money. At this, at first, this new attitude of time was imposed by the clock only masters on the unwilling poor. It had to be imposed. Factory slave reacted in his spare time by living with a chaotic irregularity because they, it's so regimented. As soon as they escape, they want to completely disregard time. So there was chaotic irregularity which characterized the gin sodden slums of early 19th century industrialism. Men fled to the timeless world of drink or Methodist inspiration. But gradually, so of course, whenever those, uh, you know, those changes come, you have to note that. So, but, so till here it was new attitude to time imposed by factory owners on the workers, reaction bring chaos. But Gradually, the idea of regularity, regularity spread downwards among the workers. 19th century religion and morality played their part. So then it became so regularized that people just accepted it. Then there was no need to impose it. The introduction of mass-produced watches and clocks in the 1850s spread time consciousness among those who had previously merely reacted to the stimulus of the you know, the factory whistle. Now, everybody could afford a watch. Punctuality was held up as the greatest of virtues. So there you have it. Religion de uh, declared wasting time is a sin, so punctuality became a virtue and everybody was able to look at the clock because of the cheap uh, clocks that were available or watches that were available. Next paragraph. Out of this slavish dependence on mechanical time, there grew up the demoralizing regimentation of life, which characterizes factory work today. Remember, this is written in 1944. The man who fails to conform faces social disapproval and economic ruin. If he is late at the factory, the worker will lose his job at the present or right now, that is when the war was on, while wartime regulations were in force, find himself in prison if he didn't uh, stick to time. So can you imagine how much of a tyrant time had become? Dependence on time created a demoralized society. Workers who didn't conform lost their jobs or were even had to go to prison. Summary of this part would be workers initially resisted, soon complied, religion also forced conformity. Altogether, people were demoralized. Nor does the financial imposition of regularity tend in the long run to greater efficiency. So if you think the only disadvantage was that people were demoralized, no. The problem was that it didn't even lead to greater efficiency. Indeed, the quality of the product is usually much poorer because the employer regarding time as a commodity, which he has to pay for, forces the operative to maintain such a speed that his work must necessarily be skimmed. Work suffers. Quantity rather than quality becomes the criteria. The enjoyment is taken out of work itself and the worker in his turn becomes a clock watcher. He's constantly looking at the time to see, is it over? Can I go? Can I go? Concerned only when he will be able to escape to the scanty and monotonous leisure of industrial society in which he kills time by cramming in as much time-scheduled and mechanized enjoyment of cinema, radio and newspapers as his wage packet and his tiredness allow. So, surprisingly, strict adherence of time or to time does not need to gre greater efficiency. Actually, quality is compromised. Worker is only interested in getting out. The problem of the clock is, in general, similar to that of the machine. 
Mechanical time is valuable as a means of coordinating coordination of activities in a highly developed society, just as the machine is valuable as a means of reducing unnecessary labor to the minimum. Both are valuable for the contribution they make to the smooth running of society, but neither should be allowed to dominate men's lives as they do today. Remember, the question was what claim is the author making and this is of course where you would find it. And so it says clock which was supposed to aid in coordinative activities has begun to dominate men's lives and the overall summary would be clocks cannot dominate human lives. They should help not hinder. So if we were to go to the question, what is the author's central claim in the given passage? What are you likely to find the author's, where are you likely to find the author's claim? Towards the end, we just saw that. So most passages, this is what you're going to have to look at. Overall, clocks cannot dominate human lives. They should be helping. They shouldn't be hindering, you know, the normal flow of life. Let's look at our four options. The clock is a symbol of industrial exploitation. It is, but that's not the claim that the author is making. So out. The one who controls time is the most significant of all workers. Again, something which was written in the passage, but that's not the central claim of the passage. Humans need to free themselves from the tyranny of time. Yes, that's what the central claim of the passage is. But we never choose C without ha having a look at D. D says, the ancient Greeks, Chinese and Arabs were far happier without clocks and exact timekeeping. We don't know whether they were happier. Something about the Greeks, Chinese and Arabs is mentioned, but not whether they were happier. And anyway, that would not be the central claim. So D is out and C would be the answer.